Today, you are guaranteed to laugh as you learn English with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Let's do it. So we have selected two hilarious clips from the show that you will enjoy even if you have not seen it before. And this series is really great for learning everyday expressions as well as vocabulary related to police, law, and the military. And if you're new here, every week we make lessons just like this one so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Like Faria, who says that their English has increased a ton since they started watching our channel. And yours will too. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. I've been going at him for six hours. He won't say a word. The guy's a brick wall. Not to worry, Sarge. I'll take it from here. Hope you boys brought popcorn, because I'm about to put on a show. Well, well, well. I hear you don't like answering questions, Marcos. That's fine by me, because I'm not asking. Oop, handle fell off. Let's grab that. <clears throat> nope. So, looks like we're locked in. That's bad news for you, because you're trapped in here with a psycho. <laughs> Has anyone tried it from the outside? Lock's broken. Got to call facilities. Copy that. No rush. As I said, I got all the time in the worst little warm in here, right? Do you feel any air coming out of that vent? I got nothing. We got an ETA on facilities? At least 45 minutes. And they've checked all this paint for lead, right? And the room for asbestos? I feel like I'm sucking on a tailpipe in here. Marcos! Everybody get away from the mirror! Come on! I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Hey, calm down, man. I'll confess. Just stop freaking out. What? I did it. I robbed him. Boom! And that's how it's done. I was faking the whole thing to break him. I could have stayed in here forever. Good, because the facility's going to be a couple hours. We're going to die in here! I've been going at him for six hours. The idiom, go at someone, means to attack someone with great intensity, whether verbally, as in this scene, or physically. Example. The press went at the president, demanding an explanation for the recent espionage allegations. In this case, this phrase means that Terry has been interrogating the accused for six hours without results. He won't say a word. The guy's a brick wall. If you say that someone is a brick wall, you mean that he is being unresponsive. Terry is saying that it is impossible to get a confession from the criminal. Not to worry, Sarge. I'll take it from here. This is an informal way of saying, don't worry. My condolences to you. Yes, Anthony. yes. We're absolutely devastated. Thank you. Thank you so much for your condolences. Now, where does that leave us in regard to her account exactly? Does it go into probate no, no, or no, what? Not to worry, time. Jordan. Not to worry. So what's the deal with you guys? I don't want to get in the middle of anything. Oh, you're not. You're not. You're not getting in the middle of anything. Don't worry about Ross. Really, really. Oh, the hide! That's Ross! Hide! <laughs> Yeah, but you said not to worry about I it. lied, and I'm not sick either. Just stay behind the curtain. <laughs> Sarge is an abbreviation of sergeant. That is, an officer of middle rank of the armed forces. Jake calls him by this informal nickname because they have a friendly relationship. Not to worry, Sarge. I'll take it from here. If you say this phrase, you mean that you're responsible for that certain thing from that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Thanks, Shorty. I'll take it from here. <laughs> All right, you people ready to have some fun? Jake's saying that he will be in charge of making the cues talk. Hope you boys brought popcorn, because I'm about to put on a show. <gasps> the phrase, put on a show, is commonly used to say that you're going to make a spectacle out of something. If you don't know the series, Jake is known for constantly bragging about his skills as a police officer. So here, he is jokingly saying that they should have brought popcorn, because the interrogation will be entertaining. Let's listen again to the way that Jake says this sentence. Hope you boys brought popcorn, because I'm about to put on a show. Here we have two common things that natives do all the time. First, did you notice that the subject has been removed from this sentence? So instead of saying, I hope you boys brought popcorn, Jake just says, hope you boys brought popcorn. Second, we have the word cuz, 
which is a contraction of the word because. When speaking or writing informally, natives tend to shorten their words. If you pay attention, you'll see that they do it during several occasions during these scenes. Some other words that have been shortened are... Lock's broken. Gotta call facilities. I did it. I robbed him. And I was faking the whole thing to break him. I could have stayed in here forever. Well, well, well. I hear you don't like answering questions, Marcos. That's fine by me, because I'm not asking. Oop, handle fell off. Let's grab that. <clears throat> nope. So, looks like we're locked in. Here we can see a very common aspect of connected speech. That is, the way natives link their words together. So, in fast speech, natives emphasize the verbs, but reduce their endings when the verb is conjugated. So, as we can hear here, the ed is reduced and it links to the following word. Here, Jake doesn't say locked in, he says locked in. Let's see a couple more examples. Everything has been decided for me. I mean, I'm just locked into my life. They're towing your car, they're towing your car. I'm parked in a garage on Morton. They're towing a car. <laughs> Yo, do you want to understand native connected speech like this? Well, the most fun way to do it is with our Fluent with Friends course. In this 40 week course, you will master the principles of native connected speech alongside the TV series Friends. With 20 plus page PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And you can try for free right now with our three part masterclass. Just click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up. That's bad news for you, because you're trapped in here with a psycho. <laughs> If you're trapped somewhere, you can't leave that place. Psycho is short for psychopath. Even though this term is used for people with a mental illness, it is commonly used to refer to people who are kind of crazy and very frightening. Oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho. At night she's screaming, I'm on my mind, I'm on my mind. Let's just calm down. Get ready for the party. Calm down what? Huh? Do you think I'm a hothead like Manny? No! You can be emotional, volatile maybe, still that's a far cry from- <gasps> You put that on my house! I care what you love! Say no. Has anyone tried it from the outside? Lock's broken, gotta call facilities. What he's saying here is that he needs to call the people that work in maintenance to ask them to fix the door. Copy that, no rush. Copy that is a phrase that comes from military communication, and it means I understand. Leonard, Courtney, Gary, do you see that giant lever near the orange lava tube? Copy that. I need you to pull it all the way down. That will create a ramp so that when Red and I roll down on the ice ball, we'll be launched through the air at the perfect trajectory to take out the super weapon. Cool, got it? Now you're talking. Okay, bomb, we are in position. Time to take out those guards. Copy that. We can often hear this kind of vocabulary in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. A rush is a hurry. By saying no rush, Jake means there's no need to hurry. Do you know which of these is the opposite of saying no rush? ASAP is a common acronym that means as soon as possible. So if someone says this to you, it means that you should rush in order to finish what you're being asked to do. Note that we can say this acronym letter by letter, ASAP, or pronounce like a word, ASAP. Example, I will get that report to you ASAP. You need to improve your English ASAP if you want to get that promotion. As I said, I got all the time in the worst little warm in here, right? Do you feel any air coming out of that vent? I got nothing. A vent is a small opening that is placed in closed spaces that allows air to enter or leave. Jake seems to be claustrophobic. That is, afraid of closed spaces. And for that reason, he is starting to be very scared about this situation. We got an ETA on facilities? At least 45 minutes. ETA stands for Estimated Time of Arrival. It is the time you expect something or someone to arrive. Jake will have to wait at least 45 more minutes until the arrival of the facilities people. Unlike ASAP, we do not say this acronym as a word, ETA. So they've checked all this paint for lead, right? And the room for asbestos? Lead is a heavy metal that has very high toxicity. Until not long ago, it was still used in paint among other products, so you could have the presence of it everywhere. 
Asbestos is another very toxic mineral that's used for making fireproof material. Jake is worried about inhaling these very toxic compounds, but as you can see, he's panicking about everything just because of being locked in. I feel like I'm sucking on a tailpipe in here, Marcos! A tailpipe is a pipe that carries fumes out of car's motor. Jake is clearly overreacting while being extremely worried about all the toxic materials that could possibly be inside the room. Everybody get away from the mirror! Come on! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Hey, calm down, man! I'll confess! Just stop freaking out! To freak out is to panic. Hey, dude. Whoa, 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 relax, relax! Don't freak out. Don't, it's gonna be fine. Okay? That's a great, let me ask him. Uh, maybe Ethan's really stressed out about this deadline we have for tomorrow. Is it okay if he comes by and just runs some ideas by me real quick? Oh, um, yeah. Guys, breakfast. Guys, Phil, hello. Totally with you. Kids, put your dishes in the dishwasher. Okay, no, that's it. Everybody, gadgets down now. Why are you freaking out? Because you're also involved with the little gizmos. Nobody is even talking. Families are supposed to talk. What? I did it. I robbed them. To rob is to steal something using violence. This is a criminal act, and for that reason, the police were trying to get his confession. Example, the burglars robbed all his money. Boom! And that's how it's done. I was faking the whole thing to break him. I could have stayed in here forever. To fake means to pretend. Jake's saying that he was acting the whole time just to make the man talk. Which of these is the opposite of fake? To break someone means to destroy or defeat that person. In a scenario like this one, it means to make the criminal talk, as that is the way to defeat him. Good, because facility's gonna be a couple hours. We're gonna die in here! A couple means a pair, and it's used to refer to two things of the same type. For example, a couple of pants or a couple of days. So. Do you recognize any of these men? I was hiding in the bathroom stall, so I didn't see his face, but I heard him. He was singing along to the music at the bar. Do you remember what he was singing? I think it was that song, I Want It That Way. Backstreet Boys, I'm familiar. Okay. Number one, could you please sing the opening to I Want It That Way? Really? Okay. You are my fire. Number two, keep it going. The one Desire. Number three. Believe when I say. Number four. I want it that way. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Now number five. I never want to hear you say. Woo! I want it. Chills, literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my God, I forgot about that part. So, do you recognize any of these men? To recognize means to identify. Can you help me reach that box of cereal? Uh. Hey, you're Mitzi Roth. I recognize you from your ads. Smoking, right? I'm Luke Dumphy. My dad's Phil Dumphy. I'm sorry. Why do you hate him so much? It's just business, kid. It's not personal. Well, it's personal to us. As you can see here, if you witnessed a crime, police might ask you to identify the person that committed it. I was hiding in the bathroom stall, so I didn't see his face, but I heard him. In public restrooms, you might see that the toilets are divided by cubicles with thin walls. This is a stall. <laughs> Joey, uh, some people don't like that. <laughs> Chandler's wearing panties. What? Let me see. No, no, you have to see. Hi, Tushy. <laughs> All right. Why don't you give me your underpants? Oh, no, no, no. no. Can't help you. I'm not wearing any. <laughs> How can you not be wearing any underwear? Oh, I'm getting heat from the guy in the hot pink car. <laughs> 
Hey, right, look, Ross, I'll give you $50 for your underpants. Hey. hey. <laughs> The woman is saying that she was hiding inside one of those, and for that reason, she couldn't see him. He was singing along to the music at the bar. Do you remember what he was singing? To sing along means to sing the lyrics of a certain song at the same time as it's being played. While the bar was playing the song, I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys, the criminal was singing it. I think it was that song, I Want It That Way. Backstreet Boys, I'm familiar. Okay. When you know something well, you can say that you're familiar with it. Example, after six years of Spanish, I'm familiar with how to conjugate verbs. Jake's saying that he knows this song well. Number one, could you please sing the opening to I Want It That Way? Really? Okay. The opening is the beginning. Example, the play's opening scene was absolutely fantastic. So the opening of the song is its first couple of verses. You are my fire. Number two, keep it going. The one desire. The phrase keep it going means to continue. Example, your work's been phenomenal this week. Keep it going. Let's listen again to the way that Jake says this phrase. Number two, keep it going. Number two, keep it going. Now let's practice some native speaking patterns with this short phrase. You may have noticed that some words are much easier to hear while others seem to disappear. This is because we stress the content words and de-stress the function words. Here, the content words are keep and go. The word it and the verb ending ing are reduced. So instead of saying keep it going, Jake says keep it going. Let's listen to it again and repeat after Jake. Number two, keep it going. Number two, keep it going. The one desire if you really want something you desire it for example kids desire new toys and you might desire some relaxing holidays the lyric of this song refers to desire towards a person so if you desire someone you want to be with him or her in a romantic way number three believe when i say number four i want it that way tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache a heartache is a way of saying that something makes you feel great sadness this is commonly heard in romantic contexts for example after a breakup you might say that you have a heartache example he caused him nothing but heartaches tell me why Ain't nothing but a mistake. Now number five. I never wanna hear you say. Woo! I want it that way. The course of this hit song can actually teach us an important rule of native pronunciation and connected speech. When we have an NT in English, often we drop the T sound. For example, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. International, international. Internet, internet. Furthermore, it is common when this happens for the word with NT to link to the following word, as long as at least one of the two words is a function word. So instead of saying, I want it that way, we can hear that it's. Hey, do you like learning English with songs? Well, we have this whole music playlist full of lessons that I know you're going to enjoy checking out after you finish this lesson. Just click up here or down in the description below to find that. Woo! I want it that way. Oh, chills, literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my God, I forgot about that part. In cases like this one, the word chills refers to a shivery sensation in your body that is caused by strong emotion. If you got chills, you might have goosebumps, so your skin looks like this. This might happen if something causes you fear, or if something causes you emotion or excitement, as is the case in this scene. If you describe something as literal, you say that it's exactly what it seems to be. For example, if you put up a literal barrier to keep the world out, you've actually built a real wall. Otherwise, if you're talking in a metaphorical way, you could be saying that you became a cold person. 
Americans use this word a lot to add emphasis to what they are saying, even though the use of this word is often incorrect or exaggerated from a grammatical standpoint, like in these two examples. This is literally the worst movie ever made. It's probably not actually the worst movie, as this is subjective. It's an exaggeration. He literally could not be driving any slower. Actually, if he's moving at all, he could drive slower, so this is an incorrect use of the word. Jake saying that he felt touched by everyone singing along to the song. I've been going at him for six hours. He won't say a word. The guy's a brick wall. Not to worry, Sarge. I'll take it from here. Hope you boys brought popcorn, because I'm about to put on a show. <laughs> Well, well, well. I hear you don't like answering questions, Marcos. That's fine by me, because I'm not asking. Oop, handle fell off, let me scrap that. <clears throat> nope, so, looks like we're locked in. That's bad news for you, because you're trapped in here with a psycho. Has anyone tried it from the outside? Lock's broken, gotta call facilities. Copy that, no rush. As I said, I got all the time in the worst little worm in here, right? Do you feel any air coming out of that vent? I got nothing. We got an ETA on facilities? At least 45 minutes. And they've checked all this paint for lead, right? And the room for asbestos? I feel like I'm sucking on a tailpipe in here. Marcos! Everybody get away from the mirror! Come on! I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Hey, calm down, man, I'll confess. Just stop freaking out. What? I did it. I robbed him. Boom! And that's how it's done. I was faking the whole thing to break him. I could have stayed in here forever. Good, because the facility's gonna be a couple hours. We're gonna die in here! So, do you recognize any of these men? I was hiding in the bathroom stall, so I didn't see his face, but I heard him. He was singing along to the music at the bar. Do you remember what he was singing? I think it was that song, I Want It That Way. Backstreet Boys, I'm familiar. Okay. Number one, could you please sing the opening to I Want It That Way? Really? Okay. You are my fire. Number two, keep it going. The one desire. Number three, believe when I say. Number four, I want it that way. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Number five. I never wanna hear you say. Woo! I want it that way. way. Oh, chills. Literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that part. Hey, if you enjoyed today's lesson and you want more videos with Brooklyn Nine-Nine, be sure to hit that like button below to let us know. And if you have not seen this hilarious series yet, I just actually started watching it a few weeks ago and I have to let you know that I am laughing out loud a ton watching it. So I definitely recommend that you give it a watch. And if you want to continue on your English learning journey today, then check out one of these other lessons that you see over here. Now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah!